So a lot of people talk about digital energy. Mm. What, what does that mean? It, it's, it's a number of different things, right? It's, it's deploying the whole concepts of IoT, AI, big data into optimizing the energy system. So if you think that our energy system is still working from the same structure of during, from Edison, which we manufacture, create energy in one power plant, and we ship it down a line one way to your home or your, to your business, that entire energy system is now wholly disrupted because we have a completely distributed and complicated energy system, which consists of the ability to generate energy from renewable sources or local sources of energy. So we no longer have this very simplistic model for energy. We have a very complex interconnected model around, uh, around energy that creates two sort of different kinds of problems. One is how do you make this complex energy system fit within the traditional infrastructure? And then secondly, how do you optimize on the opportunities that it gives? And digitization enables us to optimize this new energy system without fundamentally changing our infrastructure around energy, but also enables things like renewable energy in a, in a, in a far more optimal way. Because we don't really use our renewable sources as well as we can. So digitization helps do that. So there's a number of different ways of looking at digital energy. In addition to that, it's enabling new disruptive things coming into the system. For instance, EV. So the proliferation of EV is almost inevitable globally. But how does the energy system that is there today deal with the electrification of transportation? Of, you know, if you talk to National Grid, they talk about doubling the grid capacity to be able to feed the demand that's going to be created. But if you use digitization, we can actually balance the grid in a much more careful way so that we're not, we're not increasing the amount of investment. It's billions of dollars of investment you need to make so we can reduce that. So there's a range of different things where digital technologies can enable the optimization of energy. And one of the challenges is storing this energy. Can yeah. you talk about some of the smart ways of storing it? Yeah, so storage of energy is obviously proliferating because of the stuff that we're doing around, uh, the, 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 the Elon Musk is doing around battery technology that is enabling both home storage and EV electric vehicle storage. Storage is a fantastic asset that will enable us to do this optimization of energy. So there's different ways we can use storage. One is around the EV itself. So how can we take the storage capacity of a vehicle and use that as, as a, almost a, a mechanism to provide energy back into the grid? So if you can imagine a car being parked in a, a, a train car park for eight to 10 hours, and imagine that's an EV that's connected into the grid. What you can do is discharge energy back into the car and take when it's cheap, when you're creating cheaper energy, like renewable sources of energy on a sunny day, you can put that energy back into the car, store it there, and then put it back into the grid when you need it at a more expensive or high demand time. So that storage is used in that way to balance the grid, essentially between supply and demand. But you need smart technologies, digital technologies, to be able to make that work in the right way for us to understand when is the right time to discharge the energy back into the grid? When is the right time to put the energy back into the car or a storage device? But also, how much energy is needed by the person that owns that storage device? Like if I've got a car, I've got to drive two miles back into my house, I just need enough energy to be able to do that. Will I plug my car back into the, into the house to use it? Then understanding all of that behavior using digital technologies enables us to use storage properly. So that's one way of using storage. The second is actually battery technology itself, whether it's in the home or whether it's um, in, in grid storage level. So in the home, you can, you can, if you can imagine a future where we have cars with batteries in them, homes with batteries on them, solar panels. So when we generate cheap energy from our home, we can store it and utilize that energy at a time when we may be paying expensive bills for that energy, so reduce our energy prices ourselves, or even share that with our neighbor interconnect those or sell it back into the grid. So storage is going to become quite an important asset that is going to proliferate around the grid for us to be able to balance supply and demand of energy.